talking about the realities of the street. I think at first the hip hop generation was excited about having this new voice. Um, our struggle wasn't against as much the system as it was what's going on in our own community, like I was saying earlier. So we were excited about having the voice, but that voice was not embraced. Um, I'm actually working on something right now that I'm calling uh, the Immaculate Conception of Hip Hop. And it's basically about how the, 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 the previous generation talks about the hip hop generation like they aren't our parents. Um, you know, the hip hop generation, you know, was disrespectful, or, you know, uneducated, um, money driven. And I'm like, okay, maybe, but y'all are parents. Like, where did y'all drop the ball? Where, what, why is there this disconnect? What happened in the 80s where we lost the fervor that happened in the 60s leading into the 70s? And it's not even, it's not even about a matter of placing blame. Um, but I want to make sure that this is the last generation that looks at their kids as, and their culture as being completely separated from ours. Um, there, there are times and there are moments in the history of hip hop where instead of um, boycotting, you know, saying the language we were using or the dress that we were doing, you could have found the aspects that, you, that, that the civil rights generation liked and promoted that. Put money, energy, um, the, 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 the little bit of press attention that black people garnered at that time behind supporting it. And hip hop, I don't think, ever got the civil rights generation support. Hip hop got the civil rights generation's denials and accusations after it turned gangster. Um, but even now, you know what I'm saying, we hear people wanting to boycott all day, but they're brothers like myself and other more popular artists who are doing positive hip hop. And uh, something that me and the friends of mine are, are proposing now is our culture needs to do no more boycotts. You know, we're not protesting against anything anymore. We're gonna do a boycott from now on. Um, instead, of pro uh, instead of protesting against the music we don't like, we find the brothers and sisters who are creating the art that represents our realities and our aspirations. And we find people from the previous generation who, who understand media, who understand money, who understand education, and putting energy behind promoting what's positive about the culture. Because it's still out there. Um, the gangster bling culture has not completely taken over. They just have all the money and energy behind them. I'd just like to say real briefly, there's a book entitled The First Millennium Edition of the American Directory of Certified Uncle Toms. On page, <laughs> on page 236, it talks about the nefarious niggerization of rap music. And um, Bomani was absolutely correct. NWA was the first group to come out of that. And NWA was basically set up, you know, uh, after, after probably about the first album, set up to basically neutralize public enemy and conscious hip hop. And from that moment on, it went from gangster to balling to thugging. And right now, I think we're in the pimping phase of hip hop. And all of that's by design. And we have to look at it that way. And we can, we can put that on one side, draw a line, and we can draw a direct parallels from what the civil rights movement went through. Public Enemy was in a position to the point where we tried to bridge the two. You heard Jesse Jackson on our albums. You've heard Dr. King. You've also heard Minister Farrakhan, Ava Muhammad, and other brothers and sisters, Stokely Carmichael. And what we tried to do is have young people understand, look, if you only listen to the music and understand it, you would get those life lessons. But like the brother said, we didn't get help from the civil rights uh, leaders. So what do you do now? I mean, right. I, but you know, I have to say, it's true. I think that you were let down by my generation. I, I really do, and I think, you know, we were glad, I mean, we thought we were rejecting everything that was about it being adu adult, and we thought we were rejecting everything that was materialistic, and yet, you know, we packed up, we got our education, we left the ghetto, we left it, either if we were African American or white, we left it in every way. And then when there was reflections back about what was going on, we wanted to cover our ears, we've made better prisons and schools. So I'm with you there, I'm really with you. But at what point do you say, do you stop saying, it's my parents who didn't understand me, or it's a capitalist system, you know, and maybe now there are hip hop people in the capitalist system that's making money. Because, you know, we left the ghetto and it festered and it didn't, it didn't thrive. But you guys, not maybe the people who are here, but the hip, many of the hip hop generation made role models, I see, I see young women, smart young women, pretty, pretty young women aspiring to be hoes. Me, you know, I mean, that's worse than just leaving. That is really worse than just well, can, leaving. Let me just, let me, let me can I just finish, just let me just sum this up. Dr. King said in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So when you talk about prisons and schools, the hip hop generation don't give a damn about the school or the damn prison. You understand? Because they ain't telling the child, as far as the average hip-hop head is concerned, 
telling a child to stay in school is like telling a prisoner to stay in prison. So hip hop was the voice of the voiceless and we brought all those things out that a lot of people, especially my parents, just didn't want to hear. And we said it and wasn't afraid to say it. But let me, let me say this, as you look at uh, wanting to do little work is make as much money as quick as you can without putting a little effort. You know, some people's parents taught them that. As you say, you left, a, you left something called the inner cities but you created the mentality. You say, what do we do now? Well, it's time for the generation that came before me to step to the side. It's time for you to stop holding back our generation. You, you kind of understand what I'm saying? What is happening with the older generation is come this mentality where they're so happy to get to where they are that they want to continue to hold the younger generation back right. and not let them nourish, flourish. So you say, you know, what are we going to do? That's why I ran for office. Because I got tired of being sick and tired of people saying what happened in, 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 in civil rights. And I have, it's a two-way street, right? When I started to run, nobody wanted to talk to me. Everyone decided that they were going to, you know, you're too young, you're too this. Every excuse why you can't achieve in life, right? You see where I'm going? But, but then it came a point where I had to listen to the wisdom. See, we have some of my friends, they want to make money quick, fast, in a hurry. They don't want to do no work. And then when it comes to people with gray hair, they don't want to listen to them. So I know that you're driving a car looking out the rearview mirror, but what I need you to do is move to the left lane and let me get by. And so many times, everyone is blocking. You're blocking your kids. You're blocking your kids' friends. But then you say, what's wrong with these young folks? These young folks are frustrated. They're frustrated that they go to school with, kids, with buildings that don't work. But their mom and daddy talk about how things are because they drive a Mercedes. They frustrated because they want to start a business and no one will help them out. And yet their own mother and father are successful entrepreneurs. They frustrated because mama is never, doesn't have a job and daddy ain't around, so therefore they feel as though that's their destiny and don't want to help them. They tired of them telling their parents tell them they AD just because the fact that they never graduated from college. So I, I understand what you're saying. How do we move forward? And I say we move forward two ways. One. If you're young, the hip-hop generation, whatever you want to call yourself, fight for it. One thing I learned from the civil rights movement is they fought for it. No one ever gave you anything. Yeah, the second thing is you got to listen to the wise, for those that are really wise. Some will tell you, say that they're wise, but they'll tell you a hundred reasons why you can't do anything. Right? Tell you need to go to school more, you got to get a PhD, your D, my D, you got to do a bunch of different things just to succeed. Now, what you have seen in the hip-hop generation is entrepreneurs. You've seen a movement in which Malcolm and which Martin Luther King talked about. How do we free economically so people can live and create wealth in their communities? And what you have had is, a, is no one giving them the direction to talk about how to do it in a positive way. And the people that are telling them how to do it in a positive way have been so bad and so, so disrespectful that people don't want to listen to them. Do you understand where I'm going? So how we move forward from here is, is two things. We need your help. I need your help. My kids need your help to get out the way. Let me, let me, I'm going to follow you. In a respectful, in a respectful manner, I say that in the most respectful way that I possibly can. Let me, let me say this. I think I want, to, I want Hari and, and Cheryl to respond to this is, um, as a person, I'll use myself, as a person who grew up in the civil rights generation, uh, one of the things I had to recognize, and I think and we both have to learn this, and I'd be interested in, in Cheryl and Howie's take on this, is that you have to recognize the intelligence, history, power, and diversity of both movements. In other words, I think that what has happened in many cases is, and I, I just mentioned your response, I think that part of the problem is we haven't taken the time I had to listen. I, I didn't like hip hop. I had to listen to it. I had to begin to realize that there were some, some different strains to it. I, I, I had to begin to realize there was some power to it. I had to understand it. I just think that there is a unwillingness in many ways to, to understand and learn from another generation. I think that, that when people think about hip hop, they have they have this negative stereotype about the, the, the imagery and the language. And I think that, I mean, I remember my kids listening to De La Soul and, and you know, Public Enemy and a whole bunch of other people. And, and I said something when I didn't like the other side. I mean, it wasn't that I said don't listen to it, but I did say to them, you know, think about this. 
What are they saying about when they make this 